it's not like they all do this. It's not like every steroid hits 5-alpha reductase and then becomes DHT, which is for some reason a lot of people think that. They think that you take any compound and then it turns into DHT to some extent. And it's just not the case. What's up guys, Derek, moreplatesmoredace.com. Today we're gonna to be talking about what steroids finasteride can actually protect you from. So there's a misconception that finasteride is just some like hair loss prevention compound that can help prevent hair loss on any androgen for some reason without considering the mechanism of action of how it actually works. So I want to detail exactly what you can expect from it and what it can actually protect somebody from. So most of the steroids used for bodybuilding and powerlifting are not potent substrates for 5-alpha reductase or are not substrates for 5-alpha reductase at all. So what that means is if some guy injects X compound, let's just say Primabolin or Mastron or they take Winstrol or they take whatever, a lot of these things are derived from X compound and 5-alpha reductase is an enzyme and the enzymatic process of this compound creating or being converted into metabolites through 5-alpha reductase, it's not like they all do this. It's not like every steroid hits 5-alpha reductase and then becomes DHT, which is for some reason a lot of people think that. They think that you take any compound and then it turns into DHT to some extent. And it's just not the case. Like DHT derivatives don't convert back into DHT. 19 nors don't convert into DHT. The only thing that converts to DHT is testosterone. Like literal testosterone turns into dihydrotestosterone. Every other, anything else that's a substrate for 5-alpha reductase, if they even create metabolites to begin with, they're, you know, dihydroboldenone, which is, you know, DHB, or dihydro, you know, nandrolone, or another compound entirely based on their own, you know, chemical structure and the way they interact with this enzyme. The thing is, though, is every other compound either doesn't interact substantially enough to create enough of X compound metabolite to be an issue to begin with, or they essentially create metabolites that are not significantly more androgenic than the parent hormone. So when we're talking about compounds that actually become, you know, like far more not hair safe when they hit 5-alpha reductase, the only one really is testosterone. Like when we talk about EQ to DHB, you barely create any DHB through this enzymatic process from EQ. And EQ, like, that's why people take DHB to begin with, because you can't just, even if you mega dose EQ, you're barely going to get any DHB out of it endogenously through 5-alpha reductase. So taking a 5-AR inhibitor isn't going to even though DHB is more androgenic, it's not like you're significantly offsetting a spike in androgenicity by taking finasteride with EQ. If you take uh, trenbolone, it's not a substrate for 5-alpha reductase. It doesn't turn into a more androgenic metabolite. So taking finasteride doesn't do anything. It literally doesn't protect you at all. Things like anandrol, things like winstrol, things like masteron. Things like proviron, things like primo. They don't hit 5-AR and then convert into more potent you know, like dihydro metabolites, 5-alpha reduced metabolites of the parent hormone, all finasteride does is inhibit this enzyme. It doesn't, it, it doesn't like have anti-androgen activity at the receptor. All it does is inhibit compounds from undergoing this enzymatic process. So even if you're inhibiting this enzyme completely with dutasteride or, you know, nearly completely 99% or something, it doesn't really matter because these parent hormones are inherently androgenic to a significant extent and their metabolites either don't even, they don't even have metabolites through 5-AR or their metabolites are present in such small amounts that it doesn't even matter or they just, you know, the metabolites aren't more androgenic than the parent hormone anyways. And in some cases, like with nandrolone, inhibiting 5-alpha reductase actually is worse for hair because you're inhibiting the process by which it converts to a far less androgenic metabolite in 5-AR dense areas, which I've made a video on recently. When it comes down to it, the only hormone that's really worth using finasteride or dutasteride with to inhibit 5-alpha reductase, if that's even, you know, something you want to do to begin with for offsetting hair loss prevention, I'm not saying you should or shouldn't, you know, discuss this with your doctor. None of this is medical advice, obviously. The only hormone that finasteride will significantly prevent hair loss as a result of 5-alpha reduction is testosterone because DHT is very, very androgenic relative to testosterone. Binding affinity is several times higher. 
its tissue selectivity is terrible. It's far more androgenic than anabolic. In fact, it you know barely has an anabolic effect at all on muscle tissue. And that's why if you inhibit 5-alpha reductase, it has, you know, almost no, has the net effect on muscle tissue accrual is like zero. When you compare people who take dutasteride and finasteride to people who don't, there's like no effect on muscle mass or strength at the end of the day. So, and actually, when you actually look at it, there's an argument that inhibiting 5-alpha reductase can lead to better muscle building outcomes. And this is, you know, seen in the uh, pseudo hermaphrodites who are 5-alpha reductase deficient and just inherently essentially can't convert very much to DHT because they basically have a mutation that prevents them from having proper 5-alpha reductase activity. So they have an enzymatic like defect or a mutation, which is more or less just their own like gene issue that is the equivalent of somebody taking finasteride or dutasteride. So they don't develop properly sexually through puberty because of this defect. But once they get through puberty, they actually have more muscle than their... If you have a twin who has this defect and you have a twin who doesn't, They've actually, well, it's not like they've done a s several studies on this, but in particular, I've covered one case where two twin brothers, one had, was a pseudo hermaphrodite with 5-alpha reductase deficiency, and one wasn't, one was normal. So he had a normal amount of DHT and 5-alpha reduction. The one that had normal DHT levels was far less muscular than the guy who had 5-alpha reductase deficiency because the guy with 5-alpha reductase deficiency couldn't convert any DHT. So all that testosterone that would have converted to DHT remained as test, which, you know, milligram for milligram is multiple fold more anabolic than DHT. So the end result of having better test levels than the guy who had more DHT was more muscle mass, less hair loss, less uh, facial hair, etc. So kind of what you'd expect from somebody who has a more tissue selective hormone dominating their hormone profile relative to a guy who has more DHT, but less anabolism. So basically at the end of the day, if you take finasteride, dutasteride, like you're really doing nothing at the end of the day. Like these do not act on the androgen receptor. Like the 5-alpha reductase inhibitor finasteride and dutasteride don't act on the androgen receptor. So expecting them to prevent hair loss, like it's just not gonna happen. These things, they bind to the AR and they transcribe their effects irrespective of your inhibition of this enzyme because it doesn't even matter. Like the whole point is you're inhibiting the enzymatic process, not their, you know, binding to AR and transcribing effects. So if the parent hormone itself is androgenic, it doesn't really matter how much you inhibit 5-alpha reductase. So at the end of the day, the only thing it's really useful against is testosterone, hence why, you know, naturals see such good, you know, hair loss prevention outcomes with finasteride and dutasteride, and hence why people who use testosterone exogenously experience, you know, fairly good outcomes as well. But guys who blast trembolone, guys who blast whatever, they're not gonna have any protection from those other hormones. So just keep that in mind because I see a lot of guys who think for some reason everything just converts to DHT and they're gonna be protected. It's just not the case. So thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplacemoredates.com. Follow me on Instagram at moreplace underscore more dates, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, etc. Podcast link video description below if you guys can drop a five star rating really helps over there too. Drop a comment, helps the algorithm on YouTube a lot. So I really appreciate when you guys do that. Talk to you guys soon.